Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I wanted to show you kind of a part two to the original metallic gilding polish video that I did. And I will link that below and also on my blog in case you haven't seen that. But I wanted to show you the opal and the regular gilding polishes in this video. So we're gonna create several backgrounds and several little elements for our cards. And then we'll do an assembly of quite a few cards at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the first example, I'm gonna be using the 3D textured impressions embossing folder from Sizzix, and this is called Mosaic Gems. And you can see this here, this is really beautiful, and I'm gonna run it through on some black 100 pound cardstock and on my Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock as well. So I went ahead and did that, and I also wanted to give you a quick look at this little art journal, which I know I showed you in the last video, but I wanted to talk about these colors a little bit more. You can see that that strip of paper above these colors is on black cardstock. So you can see how different these opal metallics look on white cardstock versus the black cardstock above it. And the regular gilding polishes pretty much look the same. So we're going to be looking at these a little bit closer today. So let's go ahead and start with these colors here. I'm going to start off with the Golden Flamingo, and this is an opal polish. So the opal polishes are a lighter, more translucent kind of a polish. So you can kind of see the color of the paper coming through from underneath. And I'm going to take my foam applicator, which comes with the, with the container. It's right on top of the container. And I'm just going to kind of hit the high spots on this embossing folder. Now I'll show you the same colors on black. And I want to show you how different this is. When you place this color on black, it almost looks like gold. It has a gold tone to it. So I'll show you up close so you can see what I mean here. These look completely different on black versus white cardstock. So these are the opal ones, which again are a little more translucent and look completely different depending on the cardstock you use. So the second color here I'm using is the blue parakeet, which again will come out on the white paper in kind of that green tone, but on the black paper, it's going to be more of a blue color. So these are really fun. I feel like it's more than one color in a jar because it looks different on dark paper. And you could also use navy blue cardstock here and try some of your other colors as well. I've done some craft cardstock. It's just, they're really fun to play with. And this one here is the pink thistle. And so this again on the white is gonna give us that pink tone. And I just think these colors are just so beautiful. And then let me show you, this one has more of a, I don't know, a dark pink or a reddish pink color to it. So I'm doing the exact same technique on both of these pieces of cardstock, just to show you how completely different these are going to look. Now I know on the last video, I mostly used the gilding polishes. These are the opal polishes that we're using in this first example here. And now I'm using the blue parakeet. And when you take these out of the jar, you wanna kinda of just scrape your foam applicator along the edge of the jar. So you just need a tiny little bit. And you can see this one on the black paper almost has a purple lavender look to it. So again, you wanna scrape off most of it. You don't need much on your applicator tool at all. And that applicator is right at the very top of the jar. So now you can see those two, and I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter. This is the Glitter Kiss. And I'll show you here that it has this beautiful sparkle effect to it. I do find the easiest way to remove the foam applicator from the top of the jar is to place the cover on the uh, tabletop and then just push to the side and pop that applicator out. And then again, when you pull that from the inside of the jar, you just wanna scrape it along the edge of the jar and then rub that on. And I'm just trying to hit the high spots here and you can see, I hope you can see that it gives that beautiful glimmery effect. It's got a nice sparkle to it. And this has a little texture to it. It's kind of gritty, 
So it has a little bit of a gritty texture to it, which again, just adds a little bit more dimension to your card. So those are those two. Now let's switch to the blushed peach opal polish. Now here, I'm just going to do a direct to paper technique, which just means I'm just going to take that ink directly to my paper. I'm going to grab the blue parakeet and you can see that this ink does not blend very well. It just basically dries almost as soon as it goes down. This is the pink thistle. So I'm just going to keep as adding some layers of color here. I'm not worried about that overlap and that I can't blend it out. And all of these have this beautiful shimmer to them. So they have a really nice metallic look to them. So again, I'm just going to add a few more layers of color here. And I'm not worried about where they where those colors touch each other because we're going to be doing some different things with these later. For now, all I want to do is show you all the different backgrounds that I made. And then at the end, we'll put some cards together as well. So I went back to that glitter kiss and added that all over the top of that panel. So now let's go to the mint gilding polish. And again, this is going to be a little bit more opaque because it is just a polish. It's not one of the opals. So you can see it goes on a little bit darker. So I'm adding again, just going to go ahead and add some color here. Now I'm using the Indian Pink Gilding Polish, which I hadn't used, and I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. Just such a beautiful color. So again, I'm just kind of scraping it along the edge of the jar here. And then the last color I'll take is the Ocean Teal. Now what's nice is that even though they're not blending together, I can kind of go over the top lightly and just add some more color here. And then if I don't like the look of this, I can go back over with my colors and just kind of start over. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that lighter color here. And you can see again, you get that beautiful shimmer. I just think these are gorgeous. Now I'll do the same exact thing on the black paper. Now because these are not the opals, they will be pretty true to the colors that we had before. They'll just be a little muted out by that black cardstock behind there. And again, I know a lot of you had asked me to do another video on these. So I wanted to try to show you in this video as many different color combinations and backgrounds as I could. And if you are interested in more videos like this, just feel free to let me know. You can send me an email or on my blog or just post a comment here just so I know if you are interested in seeing more of these. Um, I personally find them so much fun to play with, so I'm happy to, to show you some other things you can do with these. And again, I'm just adding layers of color here. And I did want to leave a little bit of that black showing from behind. So you can see the difference here. Now let's grab another 3D textured impressions embossing folder. And this is the Bohemian Botanicals. Another beautiful embossing folder. So I went ahead and ran that through my die cutting machines. And you do want to use the instructions for your specific machine. So for this example, I'm going to use the gilding polishes. So again, they'll stay pretty true to color. And this is the Tangy Tangerine. I'll use the same colors on the black and on the white cardstock. For this example, I really loved how the black one came out. I wasn't so sure about the white combination, but I'm going to keep the background and maybe at some point I'll find a way to use this. I'm going to blend in some rich red gilding polish. And I'm just hitting the high spots. On Now you can push down harder if you want to get down inside there. But for the most part with these 3D folders, what's nice is there's so much dimension that you can just kind of stay up on top. So I'm really lightly pressing down on these. Not much pressure at all. And then for this color here, I'm going to grab the Ocean Teal. And I, again, these colors on the right here on the black cardstock, I just think are so beautiful. 
And I'll do the same thing on the white as well. So now you can see those two side by side. So now I'm gonna grab these Sizzix Thinlets Detailed Butterflies. This is the mini butterfly set. And it, it die cuts the solid butterfly and the detailed butterfly as well. So I'm using these two colors, the Golden Flamingo I'll start with, which is the lighter color. And these are the opal polishes. So again, they're gonna be a little bit more translucent. And this one is a gilding polish. So this one will be a little bit more opaque. So I'm going to just kind of put that down the center a little bit. So you can mix and match these polishes together, the gilding with the opals, to get a nice combination here. And then I'm going to just kind of blend those two colors in. Again, they don't blend really well. So I'm just kind of really just adding some more of that lighter ink over the top here. And this is going to be covered by that detailed portion. So I really just want to get some color back here. Adding a little bit more shadow to the center, and then I'll take the take the pink thistle opal, and I'll put that right around the edges. And you can see how pretty that's going to be with that layered over the top there. So now going back to this background that we did earlier, I'm going to place that in that same embossing folder and run that through my die cutting machine. And what's nice is when it has this ink on it, it gives the paper a really interesting texture to it. It really lends itself well to being uh, embossed. Now here I'm just adding a bit of that lighter color. That is the Golden Glow Opal Polish, but now I'm going in with the Gold Treasure Polish. This is a little bit darker. I thought that was just a little too light, but I did want to show it to you. But now I'm going to add some of this darker gold. And I just went over some of the high spots. I did leave some of that lighter color, and then I decided to go all the way around the edges just to kind of frame this panel a little bit. So I'm just kind of rubbing, now I'm pressing down a little bit harder here because I want to get down inside uh, those areas there, right down to the paper and create a little bit of a frame around this. And you can see that up close. Now with those butterflies, I'm going to go ahead and die cut some of them out of that panel that we created earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut these. And I wanted to show you how pretty these are. And they again, they have that very interesting texture to them. They're very uh, pliable when you add that ink to the paper. They're very bendable. They, they would take shape very easily. Now I'm going to use the Tangy Tangerine and just create some color on these two. And I'll go back to that rich red gilding polish as well. And we're just going to use these on a card later on. I'm actually just probably going to use one of these. Now, I thought I'd do some flowers as well just to show you how those look. These are the Sizzix Thinlets by Tim Holtz. This is the Funky Floral number three. And I just grabbed a few of these little flowers and leaves here. Now, with Blushed Peach Opal Polish, I'm just going to put some color down here just so that I can die cut some flowers. So I'll use a little bit of this color. Then I'm going to add the pink thistle opal polish again, just creating some areas of color here so that I can die cut some of these elements out of these. And then we'll do some of the leaves from the blue parakeet opal polish. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut a bunch of pieces out of this, these uh, colors. And I'm running those through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. So I've got all of these little pieces all set. And now let's go to building some of these cards. Now I'm going to grab my quote chips from Tim Holtz. And you get all of these wonderful quote chips. You get a whole package filled with different ones. So the hardest part here is deciding which one to use. 
So I added a little bit of that ink all the way around the edges there just to coordinate with the card. And that's that ocean teal that we used earlier. And I added a little bit to a metal gear also by Tim Holtz. And I will list all of these products below. I'm using my ATG 700 tape dispenser and I'm gonna attach this to my card. So this will be a standard A2 size card, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm adding a little bit of the Ranger multi-medium matte glue to attach these together. That's a super strong adhesive and it works on paper, metal, plastic. So I'm gonna glue that metal gear right to the center of my butterfly here. And the cardstock I use for the card is some Kraft 100 pound cardstock. Now I'll add the quote chip while I'm waiting for that to dry. And again, I'm going to back to that multi-medium matte glue. And since that chipboard is so thick, I'm going to pop this up with a foam uh, dot. And these are from Kaiser Craft. And I'm just going to curl up the wings on my butterfly a little bit. So these are those mounting foam dots and they're super thick. So this is gonna pop this up nicely. So I'll just place one on the back, right on the center there and pop that up. And I just backed that butterfly with some black cardstock. So I, I did go ahead and die cut the the butterfly in black as well. I was going to use those other two colors together, but I decided I like the black behind the butterfly a little bit better. So now let's take this panel that we created earlier and we're gonna put this on a black card. And I cut a little bit of some black cardstock just to fit behind this quote chip. And I inked around that quote chip again with a little bit of that coordinating ink. Again, I'll attach this to my card. And now I have that butterfly we created earlier. And for this one, I'm also gonna attach the detailed portion of the butterfly in some black 100 pound cardstock. And that's really gonna make this pop. I just think this is beautiful. I love this together with the black and the pinks and purples. So let's let that dry. And then I went ahead and attached that to my card with one of those foam dots. And I also added a metallic droplet from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection right in the center of that butterfly, just to coordinate with that gold ink in the background. And then you can curl up those uh, wings just a little bit and take a closer look at that. Now this background that we created in the beginning, I'm going to attach that to a white card. And since I am a, I do love pastels, this one I just really love. I'm gonna add a few little vines here. I thought I would just give these a little shape. So I've got my little sculpting mat here. And these are by Sizzix. I have, I think it came with three sculpting tools and some scissors. I will also list that below as well. And I'm just gonna sculpt these just a little bit. All I'm really doing is breaking down the fibers of the paper just a little, just to give them some shape and dimension. And for that little flower, I'll just, I'll just, uh, Actually, I'm gonna flip that over and push those petals up towards me and then just push down right in the center and that'll give it kind of a rounded edge. Now I'm using my Marvy Jewel Picker and I'll place the center right inside this flower. This just makes it a lot easier to pick up these little items. And now I can go ahead and attach these to the card. So what's really fun, I think, is just to make a whole bunch of backgrounds. Just, just play with the colors and make your backgrounds. And then you can set those aside for any time that you're ready to make a card. 
And I just wanted to show you that once you have all these backgrounds, how easy it is just to put together several cards here. And I usually just keep everything in a little packet and so that I can just grab and create a card if I'm in a hurry and I need a card quickly. So this, I'm just going to, again, place one of those word chips on here, and then I'll go ahead and attach that flower. So there's a closer look at that card, and that one has that glitter kiss on it. So you can see that little bit of sparkle that we get from that. So now for this background that we created earlier, that one had that glitter kiss all over the background. I'm going to attach that to a white card. And this one is the exact size of the card. So for this background, I'm using the Sizzix Thinlets, this beautiful floral organic frame by Tim Holtz with all this beautiful detail on it. And I'm going to just cover this entire panel with that. And again, I use some black 100 pound cardstock. I'm gonna put glue all over the back of this, just some tiny little dots of glue, and then I'll attach that to my card. So that is just gonna let some of that background show through. So that's why I wasn't too worried about the blending on this. I just wanted to get some color in the background. Now I've got some little flowers that I die cut here and I'm just going to pop those up a little bit using the sculpting tools. And then I'll just go ahead and glue those together. Just going to attach that little center to my flower here. And now I'm using this uh, pointed sculpting tool just to create some little veins in these leaves here. And then I'll just give a little shape to these ferns as well. So we can go ahead and assemble this one. And I'm just going to keep these cards simple by keeping the layouts very, very similar to each other. Just adding a word chip and a couple little items off to the left hand side. And this would also make a great little collection of cards to give somebody as a gift. If you wanted to make a set of note cards, this would be a really great way to go. And again, I'll go ahead and attach the rest of these items here. So once that was dry, let me give you a closer look at that. And again, you can see that beautiful sparkle we have in the background there. And I did add a little color around the edges of that quote chip as well. So let's take a closer look at the finished cards. Just think these are so pretty. And we still have a bunch of pieces left over and I'll show you that here in a second. So here's all the little items we had. I cut a bunch of those butterflies earlier, so I still have those for future cards. And then here's that background. We used the pastel one, and here we used the one on the black cardstock. And then this is the background we created, and that's where I die cut those butterflies from. So we still have some things left we can create with. And just as a final note, 
I just want to show you that it is best if you clean these up when you're done using them for the day. I like to rinse off the sponge and wait till it's dry. And then I also like to wipe down the top of the jars. So just take a damp baby wipe or a paper towel and just wipe that top of the jar off. Otherwise it can get a little sticky there and a little difficult to take the lids off. And then I like to spritz it with a little bit of water just to keep that nice and moist. Um, someone had suggested to me press and seal also works really well here just to keep that moisture in. So that's another great idea. So then you can just pop that sponge back in place. So now I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. And don't forget to watch the first video, which I will link below and also on my blog. Have a great day. Bye-bye.